This is the beauty of this world. If you do the right things, whichever way, it still works. You do it crying, you do it with love, you do it with joy, you do it with hatred, you do it with anger, if you do the right thing, it works. This is the way of the world. As long as you're doing the right things, it doesn't matter how you do it, it still works. There is no such thing as only if you do it lovingly, it'll work. No, if you do it lovingly, it'll be beautiful for you, that's all. <laughs> the process will be wonderful for you, otherwise it'll be misery, but it still works. If you go and water these mango plants with great distress, still it works, mangoes will come. It's just that you can't enjoy it, somebody else will eat it. <laughs> if you do it very joyfully, lovingly, the first sight of the flower you'll notice it, maybe you will get to eat it. Otherwise, you may not eat it but it still works. So, this is the beauty of this existence. As long as you're doing the right things, it works. How you do it will decide the quality of your life, not whether it happens or not, it'll anyway happen. It once happened, there was a chicken farmer, you know, the chicken farmer, a poultry farmer. So as a part of uh, enhancing productivity, he was always researching and one day he found a newspaper article about how a man set a record by laying twenty-four thousand bricks in a day, bricklayer. So he was very inspired. He cut this article out of the newspaper and he was taking it into the poultry. People asked, uh, what, what are you going to do? Where, where are you going? He said, I am going to tell all my chicken how this man laid twenty-four thousand bricks in a day. <laughs> You're hoping. <laughs> it doesn't work like this. This is not the way it works. A man laid twenty-four thousand bricks you tell your chicken, it's not going to lay twenty-four thousand eggs for you. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Just to find out how this one works, unfortunately people take a whole lifetime and still they don't know how this works. If you understand this much that if you raise beyond your discrimination and if you are able to look at everything as one, if you have only one eye, for everything. For this one kind of eye, for this another kind of eye. No, not that. You have only one eye for everything. If you are like this, suddenly your body will be full of light. It works. This one thing, just this one thing. If you can, instead of being here, if you allow your spirituality to go till here, if these two eyes get submerged and you are able to see everything with one eye, not with two, you like this person, you don't like this person, you love this person, you hate this person, you are all okay with this one, not okay with this one. This one is nice, you can't stand that one. If you just transcend that, if you are able to look at everything with one eye, sadhana will go to a different dimension altogether. This one thing you must do, otherwise lighting up takes lot of effort. <laughs> if you want to light up without this, it takes phenomenal effort and it dissipates very soon. See, when you're, when you're looking at your life only as a survival process, discrimination is a must. You walk out on the street, you are like any other animal in the forest. Constantly looking, who is okay, who is not okay, where is the danger, where is… where is a friend, where is an enemy, constantly looking at. If you live in that condition, survival gets taken care of, yes. But this discriminatory process, if it exceeds its limits, 
then everything in the existence becomes fragmented and the chances of ever you lighting up becomes remote. It is useful only for survival. If you want to look at life, if you want to perceive life for what it really is, you need one eye, not two. The two will help you to survive and that's all. It is just that over a period of time, survival, the word survival might have gotten complicated. No, that is not it, it's not just survival to carry my profession, to pursue my career, to do this, to do that, I need discriminatory mind. It is just that you have complicated your survival process, that's all. What used to be just food in the stomach at one time, survival, now it has become many, many, many things. The survival process has gotten extremely complicated as the so-called civilization happens, people did not get really civilized. They complicated their savagery. Simple savagery was you saw a man, if you didn't like him, you speared him. The simple savagery. Now it's very complex. If you don't like somebody, you write a wrong article in the newspaper not mentioning anything about him, but you'll maul him in a million different ways. <laughs> so complicating, constantly going on complicating the survival process will present you with many problems and of course you could find solutions. You could busy yourself in inventing problems and finding solutions. What is the solution ultimately? You will see if you go like this, the only relief both for the people who believe they are finding solutions and people who are directly, who are straightforward about creating problems and people who create problems in roundabout ways, for both of them the only relief ultimately will be to rest in peace because that's the only time they will know what it means to at least lie down in one place without rolling within themselves all the time. Not one moment of stillness will you ever know. If you have not known the beauty and immensity of being still, to put it simply, you're actually ill. If I sit like this, naturally you will think I'm ill, isn't it? Is this not what's happening with your mind? This is illness. Your only comfort is even the doctor is not able to see. Because two shaking people can't see each other shaking. If you can't get a handle on this life, do you believe that you have any grasp of the whole cosmic scape or any other aspect of life? You think it's possible? It is just that you will become dedicated to your psychological process. What's happening in your mind? Your thought and your emotion becomes of paramount importance. When your thought and your emotion becomes paramount importance, to put it very simply, what it means is your petty creation has taken precedence. It has become far more important than the grandeur of the Creator's creation. That's all it means. That is a very, very small way to exist on the planet, smallest way for a human being to exist is to be caught up in his creation. Because what you can create here, whoever you may be, however powerful you may be, however capable you may be, what you can create is so petty,
come at, compared to the scape of creation that's already happened. If you want to know life, if you want to taste life, if you want to suck the sap of life, it's never going to happen through your psychological process.